Hi, I'm Lisa Leiter. Here's your Chicago Business Today Midday Report. We have news on Chicago's two tallest towers. Two residents are suing the John Hancock Center condo board over a plan to restrict rentals there. Coupon Cabin Chief Executive Scott Kluth and fellow resident Steve Brin allege that a proposed rule violates the bylaws of the condo association. Kluth owns four units in the building and lives in one. Brin owns one and has historically rented it. The lawsuit highlights a hot topic among condo boards downtown. More owners want to rent their units rather than sell in a down market, but some worry that a high number of renters could hurt their building's image and lower unit values. Well, Cranes this week looks at Willis, formerly Sears Tower, and how it's overcome post-September 11th fears. The terrorist attacks had created worries about working in a skyscraper, and at one point the building was only 78% leased in 2006. But since then, the Sky Deck has been through an $8 million renovation. Willis took a lease with naming rights, and United Continental moved in. Now the tower's biggest challenge is filling the more than 300,000 square feet of space vacated by Goldman Sachs. And Willis Tower owners are trying to cash in on the building's improving image and have listed it for sale at $1.5 billion. Illinois manufacturers are more upbeat than their counterparts across the country. That's according to a mid-year survey by tax consulting firm RSM McGladry. More than half of Illinois companies say they are thriving or growing compared with 44% nationwide. Nearly two-thirds said they would add to their workforce, up from last year when less than half said they would do so. Still, 60 percent of those Illinois companies surveyed are concerned that the weakening economy will impact their business. And finally, Governor Pat Quinn this week reportedly plans to tell thousands of state employees they are being laid off. The governor also plans to announce several state facilities will close, such as a prison and homes for people with mental illness and developmental disabilities. This is according to the Chicago Tribune. The report says at least 12 state agencies don't currently have the money to make it to the end of the year, with corrections, juvenile justice and human services the most affected. Well, that's this edition of Chicago Business Today. You can read more about these stories at chicagobusiness.com. Thanks for watching. We'll see you tomorrow.